of only MB03 was impacted due to lack of demand from our key customer markets due to exceptional situation caused by COVID-19. The sales of MB03 is expected to rebound by, uh, by, uh, from next year. We expect effects of vaccination drive to normalize situation by April 21 in uh, United States of America, which is our primary market for MB03. We therefore expect normal levels of exports of MB03 to start from May or slash June 21. We are pleased to inform you that last night itself we received orders for 100 metric tons of MB03 to be dispatched within the quarter of March 2021. This leads us to believe that our expectation of revival by May June should happen. As regards prospects of innovative polyutylene terephthalate, the agreement signed with Global Chemical Leader in April 2019 was for a nominal quantity of 400 metric tons per annum. We achieved sales of 465 metric tons in the first year of agreement and sales of 786 metric tons during nine months of FY21. Basis orders in hand, we are confident of achieving sales of about 1,000 metric tons during FY21 compared to the contract of 400 metric tons only. Basis growth in sales achieved in the last two years, we, are, we expect volume of sales to grow substantially post-21 as well. Innovative PBT finds application mainly in consumer electronics currently and is now being propagated for other applications such as automotive, textile, cosmetics, etc. The underlying strength and strong structural fundamental of this business <coughs> gives us confidence that this business will regain its momentum as the environment normalizes. Commercial sales of two new products, namely MB07, that is the easy diable, uh, uh, and, and LNC03, uh, no melt copolyester, having immense potential has started during the quarter. Export of MB16, the cationic diable master batch, is also expected to start within the month of February. Commercialization of these products will act as a strong growth trigger for the business. All these products are developed in-house, which is a testimony to our innovation and R&D capability. Further, this business is technology-driven, patent-protected, which helps limit competition and offer sustained and strong growth prospects. Our efforts in recent years have been directed towards building a comprehensive portfolio so as to reduce dependency on few products. Moving on to our film business. On year-on-year -year basis, favorable demand supply scenario coupled with higher operating leverage resulted in better profitability and margin. On quarter and quarter basis, maintenance shutdown undertaken during the quarter resulted in lower volume and revenue generation. We continue with our focus and thrust on increasing proportion of value added and specialty products and overall product mix by focusing on innovation, development and partnership with customers both in India and overseas. Resultantly, we have been achieving steady improvement in product mix. Share of value added products stood at 20% as of Q3 FY21. Commissioning of the offline quota would help us to achieve the target of 30% of value added and specialty products in the total volume very shortly. Going ahead, we believe that better product mix coupled with capacity addition through the wholly owned subsidiary will drive the performance metrics of this business. Polyester film business is one of the few segments which has benefited positively from the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. As majority of the people now prefer packaged products from health and hygiene point of view. Going forward, we expect the domestic and global demand to grow at the rate of 11 to 13 percent per annum and 6 to 6.5 percent per annum, respectively. We are accordingly getting future ready by scaling up our capacity through our wholly owned subsidiary to meet the growing demand of our customers. As regards expansion of film capacity through the wholly owned subsidiary, we have already <coughs> started implementation of the project and invested about 87.4 crores till date. Commercial production is expected to start as per the schedule, that is by October 20. Lastly, let me discuss our engineering plastics business. The performance of the division has been fairly muted over the last over the past uh, year, largely owing to the softness in the end user industry. Starting from September 20 quarter, the business delivered a stellar performance for two consecutive quarters, with revenue and margins registering a sizable improvement. Volumes of sales and profitability for the quarter were exceptionally strong on the back of strong demand from end-user industries, OFC, auto, and electrical. We, we expect the business to continue to deliver consistent and meaningful performance going forward as well. As mentioned in the previous call, we are evaluating the relocation of our engineering plastics plant to help serve the customers better and also to cut down the logistics costs that we incur current, currently. 
the relocation of the plant itself should help us improve EBITDA margin by approximately 2%. In addition to the relocation, we are also evaluating an investment towards setting up a new extruder to help us meet the growing demand. We expect the engineering plastics business to deliver consistent performance going ahead. To summarize, film business continues to be the mainstay of the company at present. We believe the capacity expansion coupled with improved product mix should help us improve overall profitability of the business. Specialty of the polymers <coughs> business is expected to deliver growth as well as better performance in the coming years. While FY21 was affected adversely to external challenges, we expect performance to pick up pace going forward. Lastly, engineering plastics as well, after a few challenging years, is getting back to its growth trajectory. The demand environment is steadily improved, improving, and we expect the momentum to continue going forward. To conclude, let me just reiterate that we are quite positive on, our, on all our businesses. We believe that all our businesses are shaping up well and are well positioned to deliver sustained performance in the coming years. <clears throat> that concludes my opening remarks. I now hand over the floor to Pradeep to walk you through our financial performance. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I will quickly walk you through the financial performance for the quarter and nine months ended December 20, post which we can end the Q&A session. Starting with the quarterly performance, revenue from the operations stood at rupees 256 crores, as against rupees 246 crores reported during Q3 FY20, higher by 4%. While on a nine months basis, the same is stood at rupees 695 crores, as against 785 crores, that is lower by 12%. Turnover at company level is lower mainly on account of sales of 355 metric ton of chips, having sales value of 1.7 crores during nine months ended December 20, as against sales of 8,390 metric ton, having sales value of 58 crores during nine months ended December 19. Though chip sales adds to the top line, it adds marginally to the bottom line. Q3 marked the first quarter wherein we have been able to deliver higher revenue run rate over the previous year, indicative of the normalcy in the business. Growth during Q3 was largely driven by a strong performance of film and classic businesses. A specialty polymer performance, as mentioned by Arvindji, was impacted by exceptional and uncontrollable situation caused in customer markets by COVID-19. EBITDA for the quarter stood at rupees 58 crores as against 45 crores generated during Q3 FY20, that is higher by 29%. While on a nine month basis, the same stood at rupees 183 crores as against 145 crores H1 FY20. Uh, nine, nine months FY20, sorry. Nine months FY20, higher by 27%. The growth was better performance of winning plastic business, better product mix, operational efficiency, and margins in film business. Finance cost for the quarter was marginally lower than December 19 quarter. On nine months basis, the same declined by 34% to rupees 13 crores as against 20 crores uh, uh, nine months uh, 20. As, as of December 31, 2020, our outstanding interest bearing sum debt, net of free cash, stood at rupees 105 crores, while interest bearing working capital liabilities stood at rupees 52 crores. Interest bearing debt net of free cash as a multiple of annualized EBITDA stood at a healthy level of 0.64 as of 31st December 2020, in comparison to 0.39 as at 30th September 20. We are committed towards maintaining better than prudent debt equity levels. This is evident from the total outside liabilities and tangible net worth ratio that is. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you all to please stay connected. Uh, we are trying to reconnect the management. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management is reconnected. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Interest bearing debt, net of free cash as a multiple of annualized EBITDA stood at a healthy level of 0.64 as of 31st December 20 in comparison to 0.39 as at 30th September 20. We are committed towards maintaining better than student debt equity level. This is evident from the total outside liability tangible network ratio that is stood at 0.58 as at 31st December 20. Further, as mentioned in the previous call, while funding the expansion project in Holion subsidiary, 
वी हैव टेकन एडवांटेज ऑफ बिनाइन इंटरेस्ट रेट एनवायरमेंट ग्लोबली एंड एस एच गॉट सैंक्शन फॉर फॉरन करेंसी टर्म लोन ऑफ यूरो ट्वेंटी एट मिलियन इन दी होली ऑन सब्सिडरी डेप्रिशिएशन फॉर दी क्वार्टर स्टूड स्टडी एट रुपीज एट पॉइंट एट फाइव करोड्स वाइल ऑन ए नाइन मंथ बेसिस द सेम स्टूड एट ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव करोड्स प्रॉफिट फॉर दी क्वार्टर स्टूड एट रुपीज थर्टी थ्री करोड्स एज अगेंस्ट ड्यूरिंग क्यू थ्री एफ वाई ट्वेंटी दैट इज हायर बाई सेवेंटी परसेंट वाइल ऑन ए नाइन मंथ बेसिस द सेम स्टूड एट हंड्रेड एंड एट करोड्स अगेंस्ट रुपीज सिक्सटी थ्री करोड्स रिपोर्टेड ड्यूरिंग नाइन मंथ एफ वाई ट्वेंटी हायर बाई सेवेंटी थ्री परसेंट टू कंक्लूड आई वुड जस्ट लाइक टू रिट्रेट वट अरविंद जी सेड अर्यर वी बिलीव ऑल आर बिजनेसिज आर वेल पोजिशन टू डिलीवर कंसिस्टेंट परफॉर्मेंस ओवर द कमिंग ईयर वाइल फिल्म बिजनेस विल कंटिन्यू टू बी द मेन स्टे ऑफ द कंपनी द ग्रोथ विल बी डिलीवर्ड बाई स्पेशली पॉलीमर्स वी एक्सपेक्टेड वी एक्सपेक्ट इंडियन प्लास्टिक बिजनेस टू कंट्रीब्यूट कंसिस्टेंटली एंड मीनिंगफुली टू द टॉप लाइन एंड बॉटम लाइन ऑफ द कंपनी गोइंग फॉरवर्ड we believe we are well placed to create significant significant value for our stakeholders in the coming years and are about to embark on an exciting phase of the business thank you uh, can we open the floor for q and a sir yes please thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touch tone telephone If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Nandkarni, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah uh thank you can you hear me yes sir we can yes. hear you yeah yeah i would first of all congratulate the management for delivering a very good set of uh, numbers uh in spite of the challenging time that we are in uh there are a few basic questions which i had uh one is uh, there is a, i can see an increase in the amount of term debt which has happened on a quarter on quarter basis so just wanted to understand uh, what exactly is the reason uh, for that okay so uh, we are uh, like i mentioned we are putting up a, a, a polyester film capacity expansion through wholly owned subsidiary and major amount of investment was made in this quarter as equity into this uh, subsidiary which caused us to uh, 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 the working capital facilities to be utilized higher than the previous quarter it's it's, it's we have also raised some for term loan uh, so that the net working capital remains healthy overall okay. uh, total debt level still remains better than prudent so i'm not worried and yeah, yeah. nobody should be yeah. worried on that account but this is mainly towards the investment which has been done so is it like a corporate debt which has been taken for investment no it was equity into the holy owned subsidiary no no but so at as the industries level it is debt we can take uh, we had unutilized work Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management is disconnected. We request all the participants to please stay connected while we reconnect them. I am back online. Uh, so you may proceed. Yeah. Uh, so understood. So uh, you were explaining something before the line got disconnected on the debt part. Yeah. So, so uh, basically, what we are explaining is that we utilize the un- unutilized uh, working capital limit, and some additional term loans were taken, which were used for capex and investment into the W O S. Okay. Understood. Uh, another couple of questions. One is on the uh, any update uh, on the renewal of the contract for the innovative C B T. You, from the you know, uh, uh, there is no need uh, the renewal of the contract is now a mere formality okay. the business is continuing to grow we, we may not even need to sign another contract for that as i have explained in my opening remarks 
against a nominal uh, contract value of 400 tons for FY21, we are going to exceed 1,000 tons already. Okay. So it's so basically you, you based on the understanding see, that it will be an uh, renewal. You will, see you will see substantial improvement in volume going forward with or without a contract. Okay. Understood. Uh, got it. And another question on engineering plastics. Uh, in your opening remarks, uh, as well as in Sadiqji's remarks, you had mentioned that you were planning to shift the uh, plant to some other location from a logistical cost yeah. perspective. So I just wanted to understand uh, when, what would be the timing of this shift and would it impact or result in a shutdown or loss of revenue because of that? No. Uh, so that, uh, we, uh, we are targeting to complete relocation by December 21. And this will not cause any uh, uh, loss of revenue because first we will install a new extruder in the new location so that any impact of closure of the old extruder is, uh, does not hit revenue. Yes, and one by one we will shift, shift all our equipment. It, it is okay. being loss of revenue. Understood. Uh, just one more question if I'm allowed. Uh, in terms of, uh, the, uh, in the, one of the statements you made that there, is a, there was a shutdown which was done in Q3. Uh, which impacted uh, the revenue, which is a maintenance shutdown, which is done. So I wanted to understand how many days was this shutdown done and what was the impact of on the revenue and EBITDA? If this shutdown days. wouldn't have been done, what would have been, uh, the revenue and EBITDA would have been higher by what quantum? So there was a seven-day shutdown, which impacted a total a, a loss of uh, production of close to 700 tons. 700 tons. 700 tons. 700 tons multiplied by, let's say, about 7 crores approximately revenue loss, uh, close to 9 crores. 9 crores uh, of revenue loss. And EBITDA on this, uh, close to 4, 4.5 crores. 4, 4.5 crores of EBITDA loss. 4 to 4 .5. And this is a, a normal maintenance shutdown which you do in Q3, considering yes, it's yes. the holiday season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. The next question is from the line of Sudhir Reddy, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. First of all, congratulations on the set of numbers, uh, whatever delivered, and also the good growth progress of growth in year on year. And just want to uh, ask a question on uh, film business. It, it, with respect to the film business, like the September quarter was good uh, because of whatever the pandemic situation. And now, the, followed by post September, like the the growth was not uh, expected. So, is this the growth going to be uh, declining more, or it, it's going to be uh, stabilized after this? I think it will be more or less stabilized. There will be there will always be some fluctuation. No business can uh, exist without uh, some fluctuation. So, uh, but basically, more or less, you can expect it to stabilize at these levels, plus minus a little bit. September quarter was an average, and I mentioned that in my previous. Phone call as well. Yes, uh, sir. I also have one more question on uh, with respect to the new order has been uh, uh, received last night, right? So can you please give more details on that? Yeah. So basically, uh, in our specialty polymer business, we largely got impacted because of uh, our stain-resistant master batch MB03, which was uh, which forms a large chunk of our. Uh, uh, business and this was highly impacted because America has is in very deep trouble because of COVID-19 and uh, we are we were participants are requested to please stay connected while we reconnect the management back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the line for the management reconnected. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Uh, sorry, we got disconnected again. I don't know what's happening. Uh, but like I said, uh, MB03 was very badly impacted because of COVID in uh, in the US. Uh, we were expecting recovery to start by May, June. And this big order, this uh, sizable volume, the order that came in last week, only supports what our uh, supposition is that this business will revive back very shortly. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this point of time. The next question is from the line of Goro Loya from Bowhead Investment. Please go ahead. Mr. Gaurav, your line is in talk mode. Kindly go ahead with your question, please. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I hope all is well. Sir, uh, can you please give me the volume data for this quarter as well as Q2, uh, 521, and the uh, gross value addition for both these two quarters? Which product do you want, Gaurav? Uh, sir, uh, for, for the packaging segment, I meant. Okay, I'll give you the volumes. So December 20, we did uh, 14,300 tons of sales. September was 15,000. You need December 19 also? Uh, no, December 19, I already have. It was 13,589, right? September was 15,000 and December is 14,300. Right. So. Uh, and what was the gross value addition, sir, for uh, these two quarters? So the 12 micron, uh, the commodity 12 micron film, I'll just give you the number. Sure. Just a minute. Uh, it was 46 rupees, but blended for all the products put together, metallized, etc., was 64 for our, uh, for the company. 64, and then the uh, cost and other indirect cost would be, let's say, somewhere around 20, 30 rupees, right? 30 rupees. So I can remove that. 20 rupees is the variable cost, and the okay. other cost is about uh, 15 rupees. 15 rupees. And what was it uh, in uh, in previous quarter, sir, in September quarter? Pardon? The cost number would remain yeah. largely. Oh. Okay. The, nay, I, I meant the gross uh, value addition in, in the last quarter. Would it be somewhere around close to 70 rupees? So September, the, the 12 micron corona was uh, 58 rupees. Blended for the company was 73 rupees, which reduced okay. to 46 for 12 micron and 64 rupees for the blended level. For understood. So, sir, just one, uh, you know, clarification. So, if I see that the volumes have increased versus last year, right? Last year, somewhere around 1,600 uh, micro uh, metric ton volume was there, right, in the packaging, and this year it's about 14,300. But if I see revenue, the revenue have declined in that uh, packaging segment. So was there a realization pressure uh, versus last year and that is leading to the compression is gross value add or it was mainly raw material driven? Raw material driven. Okay. And if I look at the revenue, you know, so th that, uh, that since the volumes have grown while the revenues are kind of, or it has declined, so was there a compression in sales value uh, as well, uh, in realization as well, or was it like the export mix would have changed, you know, export was less in this quarter, and that may have led to this kind of, uh, uh, you know. In the, in the current year, the margins are better than previous years, but the decline in revenue is because of raw materials. So and the chip sales, we have. Top chip sales, chip which also is part of the film. So sorry, your, sorry, your voice is breaking, sir. Can you please repeat that? So... Margins in FY21 are much better than margins of FY20. The reduction in revenue is because of reduction in the sharp reduction in raw material cost and no chip sale during FY21. That is the reason you see a reduction in revenue. Okay, sir. I anyways had adjusted for uh, chip revenue. I had subtracted that, but uh, I will take it offline. I strive on more clarification. And sir, if I look at specialty division, you know, your sales have declined. Let's say last year you did 20 crores or sales in this quarter, and this year it's about 13 crores, right? While our margins, uh, you know, uh, I think last year we did an EBIT of reported EBIT of 10 crores, and uh, this year it's about two crores. Or, uh, sorry, seven eight crores, and this year it's about two crores. So the, the decline in a bit is higher than uh, your uh, the revenue decline in specialty. So is it that the MB0 was much higher margin, uh, you know, product, and that's why the, the decline is higher over there in the uh, EBIT? Exactly. Or was there, you know? So Hello? The, the, the only product which really got impacted was MB03. And this entire okay. decline in revenue and margin can be attributed to that. Secondly, there are changes in the EBIT uh, calculation. So the uh, 
uh, beyond a certain threshold, the, the jump in the EBIT would be more as we increase, achieve more sales. So it's, it's okay. not everything okay. that goes into the EBIT calculation is not variable. Understood. Uh, and sir, you know, you said that you have already started exporting MB07, and I remember that you said that the potential is about 1,000 tons from one customer, right? Uh, and uh, the overall potential could be much, much higher. So uh, would we be able to expect this full 1,000 ton in next year, or, uh, you know, it would take time, you know, that's a two, three years kind of target for MB07? So uh, definitely we expect a volume between 800 to 1,000 tons in FY22. FI22. Okay. And the, the price uh, the price of the product would be, sir, close to? Uh, it is. Uh, it would be selling close to 320 rupees a kg, uh, MB07. Okay. Understood, sir. And uh, the margin would be, let's say, close to 30% or right, in, uh, at EBIT level. The distribution margin would be close to about 30%. Uh, yeah. 30%. Okay. Uh, and so similarly, last thing on NMC03, you said that uh, the, the potential there was 5,000, 6,000. So what kind of uh, volume or revenue we can expect from LMC03 in FI22 and 23? So uh, LMC03 was again impacted. Uh, because of COVID, uh, uh, the customer could not do the major launch they were expecting it, uh, to do uh, in the last quarter of uh, calendar 20. So the, the, uh, because of COVID, that got delayed. But uh, the product has been accepted commercially, technically, everything. Small volumes that we've already started moving. So every second month, we are doing about 30, 35 tons uh, uh, of this product. Uh, a bigger launch is expected around June. So we can start expecting good volumes in FI22. And this will grow substantially as the years go by. Can we expect some 1,000, 2,000 tons from this product uh, in FI22? Or would that be high, you know, considering it's a new product for customer also? And considering the pandemic, they may not want to uh, take, uh, you know, or play with new products as of now. So this is a brand new product that the customer is launching. Uh, and I'm going to uh, make a conservative estimate of about five to 600 tons of sales in FI22. Five to six hundred tons, and the realization is same as uh, MD07, close to that. No, no, no. no. The realization for this is uh, close 185 rupees a kg. 185 rupees. Okay. But contribution margin is uh, is quite high. At about 85 rupees a kg. At 85 rupees. 85 rupees. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. And last question, sir, you know, what is the exit gross value addition that we have seen in December, probably January? What is the current one day? Is it similar to the average of Q3 or it's much higher than Q3 average? Because sir, November and, uh, sorry, sir, similar. it's similar to Q3 average, right? Similar to Q3. Okay, okay, sir. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Company. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Dhaniwa, sir, for the opportunity. And Namaskar to both of the gentlemen and the team. Sir, uh, firstly, sir, I missed the, your initial part of the commentary, sir. So, sir, I would just, I was looking for the factors that resulted in the uh, lower uh, EBITDA, uh, lower PBT number, sir, in the polyester chips and film segment, uh, barring MB, MB3 part uh, due to that export or the COVID issue. How has the core, uh, what were the factors uh, that are currently playing for our core polyester film business? And how is the business environment currently shipping up in terms of the demand supply? Sir? Okay. So, I, like I mentioned in my previous earnings call, also September was an aberration where the margins were extremely high, and I mentioned that those were, those kind of numbers are not sustainable. So, the margins reduced in the December quarter, plus coupled with our maintenance shutdown, we lost about 700 tons of production, which resulted in the fall in uh, mar uh, the absolute uh, beta for the film business. On the specialty polymer side, uh, MB03 was our main driver till last year. It's not going to be so going forward. Uh, and we lost a lot of MB03 business because of COVID in America. But this is now starting to pick up again. Hello? 
Hello. Can you get that? Sir, last point. La last point. You told that MB zero uh, three. There was a drip dip in the one. Sir, could you quantify sir what was the normal rate? What was what were the deliverable schedule and what we what we were able to deliver? Okay. In FY twenty, we did about eleven hundred and fifty tons of MB zero uh, three. Before COVID happened, we we were estimating this volume to go up to fifteen sixteen hundred tons in FY twenty one. But because of the COVID impact. Up to now, we have done about 260, 260 tons, and uh, we just got an order for another 100 tons last night, and maybe uh, so we might close it at around 400 tons uh, for March quarter. But this this fresh order gives us great confidence that this business will rebound back as soon as the COVID story is over in the US. Okay. We have done after nine months 200, 260 crore. You, you, you mentioned. 616 tons. Yeah. We lost a lot of business because of COVID in MB03. Yeah, yeah, correct. correct. And, and the last quarter, you are expected to do uh, 200 tons of uh, dispatches. Yeah. About okay. Okay. 200, maybe 100 to 200 tons. Okay. And the 100 ton which you have got, what is the size of the order in, the, in value terms? This will be about four crores. Four, four and four. Yeah. Four, 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 four crores. Four plus. Right. And now coming to your core business part, sir, uh, the the business dynamics uh, and uh, how uh, how is the demand supply uh, theory playing out now in in the environment, sir? And uh, what is the way forward, sir? Go, going forward, how are, how likely is there the continuity of the same, sir? You see, a demand. We have, I have mentioned in my opening remarks also that we expect demand to continue to grow at a rate of about 11 to 13 percent in the domestic market and about six six and a half percent in the global market. So mm -hmm. this this we maintain is going to happen. Okay. And sir, could you, give, uh, could you give the breakup for the raw material baskets, sir? How, how have they shaped up? Uh, I think so. They, they look to be an inflationary money, an upward uh, bias uh, in the raw material prices. Yes, so uh, uh, raw material was very uh, steady up to about September, October, and beyond October, uh, the number price, started, uh, it started, started from November, it started going up, and it has gone up substantially from levels of about uh, 46 rupees to about 63 rupees. 63 rupees. So there's been a sharp jump yeah. in raw material prices uh, between November and now. But now it has okay. uh, started to stabilize. The movement is not going well, from week to week. What are the exit prices for MEG and PTA, sir, for, yeah. for the uh, for PTA, the month of December? Yeah, uh, December, uh, the PTA was close to 42 rupees and MEG was 38, but currently PTA is uh, 55 and uh, MEG is uh, 49. Uh, and the average you were told you for, mid, for the December, or uh, it was the exit price for December? Yeah, December the average prices? was uh, 49 rupees, 48, 49 rupees. Okay. And they have moved up... Sorry, sir. And uh, they have moved up from there also. The raw material prices have moved up for month on month yes, also. Yes. January saw. But now it's stabilizing again. Okay. So the prices are hovering in at what the January levels are. And then we will be taking a price rise also, sir, as, as the pass on is beneficial to the market. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
30 percent would be equity, 70 percent would be debt. But that uh, major portion would be through foreign country debt, uh, which is at uh, 2 percent cost. Okay, sir. Sir, currently, sir, as you uh, as the as the low interest rate regime is there in, in the country. Uh, uh, how how good it is to uh, go for a foreign debt at a two percent cost? Wherein so what is our average cost of funds domestically uh, with the rating so, from uh, the, uh, Subsequent to improvement in rating, uh, we are now uh, getting reduction in the interest rate, uh, and our effective uh, interest rate would be about eight and a half to nine percent uh, for the rupee denominated loan. And the foreign currency loan is at two percent, so there is a huge amount of saving, substantial saving with foreign currency debt. And it is a euro denominated loan, uh, and the currency has been very stable. And we have natural hedge also because we export a lot to the European nations. It is euro denominated, you told. Euro denominated. Right, sir. So now coming to the to the point about this uh, plastic uh, engineering plastic division, sir. Uh, that has, that has been a to totally turnaround story that has uh, played out. Uh, from the verge of we were on putting that we have put that division on block also I think the two three quarters earlier we were emphasizing that if we get a suitable buyer or a good price that that would have been the case but now uh, we are looking for expansion so see change in the in the business dynamics so what what exactly on ground has uh, uh, changed sir and how how comfortable are you that these these trends are not uh, blips. Uh, if, uh, for the time being and may get reversed uh, as we are also contemplating some capex and what is the size uh, we are looking forward to uh, for the capex okay uh, uh, this is uh, the information that we have on our business of engineering plastics we feel that this uh, this is not going to be a short term blip it's going to be a extended uh, uh, performance it will continue for some time and uh, we are investing in the additional uh, extruder because today we are sold out and we need we need capacity to service our customers and we are going for tolling last point sir come come again sir there's a disruption in the line i could not hear you hello yeah we expect the performance of the engineering plastic division to be sustained we don't expect okay. this to be a short term play. Okay, sir. And sir, sir, since the customer base, I think so. We you don't have more than I think so five percent revenue from single client. So they, they are they are I think the clients are in cluster. So uh, and and uh, with in the electrical parts, the PVC prices and other input prices have also gone up uh, dramatically. So uh, I just wanted to get the fillers on the side. Is there any supply squeeze, or what? What could be the probable reason from where this demand has emerged? Sir? That is my uh, uh, question. Was from so the domestic market, auto, auto. You you know how, uh, okay, okay. how auto is doing, doing brilliantly well. Electrical segment Correct. is doing brilliantly well. OSC, OSC is doing brilliantly well. So that is where the demand. Correct, Right, sir. So between, if we split between the auto and the electrical part for the electrical consumer, uh, what would be the and proportionate, OFC. sir? In this? And OFC. The last word, I could not hear. Hello? OFC, optical fiber cable business. Okay, okay, optical fiber. That, that has also seen an increased demand. Yes. What role, sir, uh, what, are, what is our scope of work in optical fiber cable? So we supply the uh, uh, raw material which goes for the sheathing of the cable, uh, optical cable fiber, optical fiber cable. Sheathing. So mean? Sheathing meaning the cover, the the the, the okay. optical fiber cable is in, is is encased inside the uh, our raw material. Correct, correct. So there there you are seeing an increment uh, demand. Yes. Okay, and you give me the sir. Can we provide you with the split, sir? If we take the breakup between OFC uh, consumer electronic electronic part and the uh, auto, what would be the split for the plastic division? I don't have those numbers readily available right now. Correct, sir. Now coming to uh, our us, sir, the minority shareholders, sir, you have re you have definitely rewarded us with an interim dividend. And even I think, sir, the promoter did purchase some equity also from one of the, your uh, shareholders only in an in an uh, uh, off-market transaction, if I if I can use the term positively here. So uh, so uh, uh, 
what what is your message to uh, us you want to deliver and what should be now uh, the way forward in rewarding uh, your your shareholders sir in what way are you uh, planning to reward us okay so we've already mentioned that we will distribute 20% of uh, uh, pat as uh, uh, up to 20% of pat as dividend and we will continue we will we maintain our uh, our commitment on that level and the buyback can be looked at as a, as a good option sir because i think the dividend the cost to your shareholders is high then what uh, when what a buyback can do to your return ratio no not right now we are not uh, we are not looking at any buyback okay sir and what what was the payment to the uh, in the employee benefit how much was payment to the kmp to the uh, to the uh, director and md out of the 15 crore for fy21 it is yet to be paid okay and this quarter also no provision has been made sir a provision we are making a provision so that the amount is spread through 12 months and i have also and made a, i have also made a i have also made a statement that uh, the management uh, will take up to 10% of the uh, profit as commission but subject to a cap of 12 crores subject to a cap of 12 crores right and lastly sir then sir for as depending upon what the what the visibility is in terms of order execution and the market di- dynamic uh, we uh, for us exiting uh, fy21 would be on a, a higher note than what it it, uh, it has been for this previous year previous quarter the preceding quarter and also last year because last year i think the covid impact was started uh, pre- prevailing so how confident are you that uh, in terms of uh, the, the current business environment we would be able to uh, uh, produce uh, or remain in line uh, the trend would be upward that is what my uh, uh, mood point is we have already performed in 9 months of fy21 we have already performed better than 12 months of fy20 correct sir and i i am only uh, you please, please you can expect fy21 to close much better than fy20 right so that that is evident from your 9 months performance i'm asking sir the march quarter visibility in terms of your I, deliverables I, I and all give you number i am sorry i'm not able to give no, you any guidance only the sentiment that the factors which were negative for us for the it's december quarter is going to be a good quarter correct sir and, and for the next year sir uh, 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 your your budgeting and your understanding Uh, how how should one be prepared and lastly sir on the uh, that, that that customized film part sir uh, has the entire benefit of the that metal crusader which we have taken uh, 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 installed in the month of may the benefits have started securing completely or still now yes. more time is left yes 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 the, the benefits of the portal have already started accruing and it's going as per plan and, and what has we hope that fy22 will also be a very good year what has been the contribution from the specialized slim parts sir for this quarter and 9 months i am sorry i don't have those numbers with me right now theek hai sir bahut bahut dhanyawad sir aapka and, uh, and all the best sir so hope thank for you. the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of arnav kapoor an individual investor please go ahead hello Yeah, I'm audible. Hi, sir. Uh, this is a quick question. I think the previous uh, uh, previous investor asked many questions, covered many of them. So one was more is to understand, uh, you know, that our guidance for 21 was about 75 CR for the specialty polymer business. Are we still maintaining that, uh, or you think it will be, you know, it will be lower than what what you had previously guided? And then, you know, you had mentioned in the last call that. For 22, you expect between 130 to 150, and trending upwards to 350 to 400 by FY24. So, given the COVID impact, do you still anticipate that those numbers will remain, uh, given the bullishness, or they'll, you know, you'll do some kind of a downward, uh, downward provisioning on those numbers? Okay. So, for FY21, we will not be able to uh, do 70, 75 crores, which is equivalent to the FY20 numbers, largely because uh, of the COVID impact on our NB03. but our, uh, what we had mentioned that for fy22 we will be able to do 130 crore approximately we stand by it and growing uh even further uh, year after year so those 
forward numbers I, I stand by. Okay, and so uh, what's what's your your underlying sense of? I mean, just for you know, for the for for us to understand, uh, what's our what's the advantage, comparative advantage that we have, you know, which is making you feel that it's very bullish. Because is it, is it that we're creating a new category? Is our products better than other competitors? Is the pricing part there? I'm just trying to understand like what's what's uh, the, what's the key driver? What is the for SP business? Sorry, SP SP. We have no competition. Yeah, yeah. So oh, there's no competition. So, so, so you are you are basically you're creating this entire market. So then how how is it being pushed to the sales? And so how, how are you how are you creating that? Like further, how do you plan to create it? Is like you're spending uh, meeting more customers. Like what's the sales channel uh, that you have? You know that you're driving it through just to get a sense of you know why do you feel it's going to grow over year on year? So you know like ten percent growth uh, roughly that you're anticipating. Is it that you created a new category which you mentioned? But how are you pushing it to the end customer? Like how are you creating that visibility in the customer's mind? This is because we are in direct touch with uh, the customers, and they are they are telling us what kind of forecast, then giving us uh, ideas about their forecast, and basis that we are giving you uh, uh, how this division will pan out in the future. These are not and numbers pulled out of a hat. These are not these no, are not guess, just guesses. This is coming directly from discussions with our customers. And and no, so absolutely, I totally agree. And the and these customers that you mentioned, these have been your long time customers, or these are like new customers which are coming, or or it's a combination of both. It's a combination of both. You can't just have old customers. You have to keep adding new customers. We are adding. We have added three products in the last few months. So they they are all going to uh, different customer, uh, different set of customers as well. Right, and is there a sales force which is driving these discussions, or you know, how is that happening? The relationship that you're building with these customers primarily in the U.S. market. We don't, uh, we don't have a we don't have a very large sales force at all because we have limited number of customers in specialty polymer business. It doesn't require a very large sales force. It's not commodity selling. Right. Fair enough. Okay, so now that answers my question. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Keshav Garg from CCIPL. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, very good evening to you, and sir, many congratulations for good numbers. Sir, uh, just had some concern about uh, the our uh, basically polyester film business that our greenfield capex that is expected to come on stream in the later part of next year. Sir, so by that time, sir, you expect that the uh, the spreads in our film division will maintain, or then, sir, since other players are also putting up capacities. So then again, the spreads might uh, shrink, sir, because everybody knows it's a cyclical industry. So, so by the time our uh, capex comes on stream, and so if spreads uh, contract, then sir, we might be in some kind of trouble. I don't think we'll be in trouble, but yes, as capacities come on, there may be short-term mismatches in demand supply. So you might see short-term. Uh, and of course, what's going to make a very big difference is our cost structure is going to be much lower than our competition. So that should hold us in good stead. Plus, okay. add to the current portfolio that we have. So, largely, we are still very bullish despite capacity coming. Yes, capacity is coming, and capacity will continue to come because there is strong demand. Demand growth. And sure, while sure. the demand growth is there, capacity is coming. There may be short, short uh, periods where there may be some mismatch. In which period that margins may may, may get affected, but overall uh, the 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 business looks good. Okay, sir. And sir, also sir, regarding uh, you have mentioned in your presentation that you are increasing the proportion of value added films in your uh, basically as a percentage of turnover to thirty percent from around twenty yeah. percent now. So, so basically, which uh, so for example, what are uh, these films? I mean, uh, you know, what are the applications? Where is it being used? And so, like, so for example, like let's say metalized films, uh, uh, do you consider it as a value-added product? No, normal metalized film is not considered as a value-added product. 
ओके सर सो देन इन दैट केस सर व्हाट एप्लीकेशन आर लार्जली इन पैकेजिंग ओके सर सर सो कैन यू गिव अस एन एग्जाम एंड बेटर दैट फॉर एग्जांपल व्हाट प्रोडक्ट डू यू कंसीडर एज वैल्यू एडेड so we have a host of we have a range of products that we consider as value added as i, I that we can take that discussion offline if you like because uh, i don't think it's possible to give you a, an answer a clear answer on that on a con call okay sir it's a very wide uh, product basket okay okay so so basically net net sir uh, is it safe to assume that maybe even if worst case scenario our threads in polyester film uh, division if they contract somewhat the additional volumes uh, should compensate for uh, the loss of margin and our profitability right. basically okay sir great sir very reassuring thank you very much sir best of luck thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you everybody for joining uh, the earnings call for our company for uh, q q3 fy21 and we look forward to uh, talking to you all again uh, after the hearing thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf